I'm wondering what are the top two or three things that you would look to see in a company, a, a, a similar company you were going to buy, or, or things that you don't want to see in a company that you're looking to buy? Spectacular question. Um, the business that I had, which was similar, I invested, I'll tell you everybody so we know, many, many years ago, I had a friend of mine that um, did what you guys do, working for somebody else. And he was unhappy, and I made the proverbial mistake of putting my friend into business. And he got into the business, and the business went from zero to three million really quick. And then when it, I was like, okay, we're doing pretty good here. When it went from three to five million, all of a sudden he started losing his fanny. I mean, we were losing money like it was going out of style. And he came to me and said, look, what we have to do here is we have to go out and buy other people. We have to grow this network. And I said, well, wait a second. What is it buying? Because in this particular business, there's really, in my opinion, there's two things. Talent and there's the relationships with the clients. Am I missing something? I'm no, asking you. It's, you've, you've got to have the talent and the, the clients have to trust you and you've got to perform. Your operations has to be there. But at the end of the day, right, if we were buying a bunch of car dealerships, we'd be looking at cash flow and the buildings and the inventory and the assets. And we'd be looking at a more finite acquisition strategy and we would have models to work off. In your world, what are the assets? The assets are the processes and systems and customers. And the problem is if I go to buy another company, it's available because something is broken. That's right. So I would encourage everybody to do in this space is as you look at acquisitions in your particular space to identify the assets that you believe really exist, which are the implementers, the, the staff that you can go out and get, the people that are actually doing the work to keep the customer engaged and their relationships with their book of business. So for example, if you had an implementer that had a specialty in working with small community banks and implementing some software, and he had a relationship with the software company and with the banking community, the asset isn't the company that you would buy. It's the man or woman that worked at that company that brought that book of business. Terrible example, but I'm going to give you one that I used on him. It's really no different than a salon. Think about it. The person that cuts your hair or colors your hair or styles you has a particular craft about them. And the reason they do well is they have a book of business where their client base comes and sees them. You don't need to buy the salon to grow your business. You need to get them and their client base into your business. And so rather than thinking about going out and making these acquisitions and buying broken cash flow, receivables that are questionable because they're going to ask you to buy their receivables or buying a book of business, I would dig down and understand what talent actually generated that book of business? Because I wouldn't want to pay for it. I'd rather pay a premium to the talent that I was going to bring over. They were making, I'm making this up for discussion, 10%. I'd rather pay them 11 and save my cash and not pay any goodwill for the acquisition. That's me. Are you? And I don't know if that's so awesome. Does that salon analogy help? Yeah. Um do you mean specifically to go after the, the acquisition people, the sales people? To go after the talent makes up those broken businesses, not the business owner and his people that make up his broken business. Okay. Because I'm worried that you're going to buy liabilities and broken processes. And I learned this along the road that I, when I did a de novo business, meaning that I just wanted to open up a new location or a new branch I, I, I went and did the analysis between making the acquisition and doing it myself. And what I learned over time was that after a certain number of years, I had my process down, which you do, right? You have your process right. down. You have your systems down and you know you want it done a certain way. When you go out and you make that acquisition and you pay a premium in, and by the way, that premium could be taking on their liabilities. That could be the form of premium that you're taking on. Okay. Potentially you're going to end up having to, to square peg round hole it. If you pick up talent, it's easier to put the talent into your infrastructure than it is to do businesses together. They're going to start saying, it's like, 
well, we pay every two weeks, you pay every week. Well, our health insurance is this and your health insurance is that. Well, you give 10 days of vacation, we only give eight days of vacation. All these sort of nuancy things that aren't really at the core of your business. But if you bring in their help desk talent and their server guys, that's not necessarily gonna bring their clients with them. Why not? Because they have contracts with that existing firm typically. The, the, the company has a contract, but the company generally has a genesis of origination. And the genesis of origination is the individual, the human being that works for them that actually has that relationship. Okay. So I just want you to, if you want to make acquisitions, that's fine. But I'm not, all I'm asking for is to, to be on the gas and the brake at the same time and see if there's a way to skin the cat where you don't get all the baggage that comes with it, particularly like it. in this environment. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Excellent. Yeah, I think you're making the point that in this, in these businesses, it is the people is that that, that the talent is one big asset, and the customers are the other asset. And um, yeah, I mean, absolutely, 100. percent